Hello and welcome to my review of One Piece Chapter 845. So the chapter starts off with Nami talking to Luffy about how he needs to move as she references that what they were told by Pound, which is that terrible things happen to people that beat the commanders of Big Mom. In fact, last time when Arouge she had defeated a commander, a gigantic storm was sent after them by Big Mom, and her enraged, angered army was also sent after that person's head. Hello, this is Chief Man here. A giant storm has just broken out on Whole Cake Island. So far, 10,000 of Mama's citizens have died. We're not quite sure why or how this is happening. We are assuming it is thanks to Mama's devil fruit ability, but she claims to love us. I don't understand why she created a giant storm that is killing so many of us. Ah, whatever. Mama does this every week. Why do we love this woman again? She's a crazy bitch. So this is the first time so far we have seen Big Mom's weather manipulation abilities in action. And I am going to be honest, I don't like it. Alright, it's incredibly overpowered. But that's the problem. At the moment, it doesn't make any sense. It's overpowered, and I feel like it would have been much better. I feel like I'm worried a theme we're gonna get with a Yoko is they have they have abilities that are kind of BS, and this is kind of bullshit. I'm sorry, it really is. This, none of this makes any sense. So she has a soul devil fruit, and she created a like it's obviously not the real sun that is talking. She can't touch the real sun. So it's just, how does this work? And I honestly, I think it's really stupid. No matter how it works, even if it's not like she created a fake sun and gave it life and created a fake bolt of lightning and gave it like that still does not explain how she can manipulate the weather of her own will. Nothing makes sense. I know how it works. I understand that her death to inherit and her, her two sets of power, but that's new in the per, press new? I don't even know how to say it, I'm so pissed off. But it just, I just don't like it. I think it's stupid. I'm sorry. It's a stupid ability. It's literally just there to make her more powerful. You know, Oda realized that people thought Big Mom was incredibly weak. That she, she had not hyped her up enough, I guess. Because, like, Kai, people were... The Fortnite arc before the weather and soul ability were revealed, Big Mom, the weakest Yoko. And it's just, ugh. It's frustrating. But yeah, I don't think the ability makes sense. I mean, it's okay, it's okay. The ability makes sense. But not in terms of the One Piece verse. It just does not make sense in terms of the One Piece verse. Okay. Okay, so we see Bobbin. For the first time leading the enraged army. We also find out that Nami is still talking to Luffy about leaving. That is another thing about the chapter that I don't necessarily like. Now, it is okay, this is a good chapter. I'll say that right now. It's good. No, no, it's not how I want to word it. It's entertaining. It's an entertaining chapter, but it's not very good because of things like us spending like half, like multiple pages altogether of Nami just saying, Luffy, you should move. The people that are coming are really strong. It's like, I get it, she's like pushing him, it's supposed to be emotional, but it really isn't. Because we know the character. We know what Nami says isn't going to matter. So it's more like whenever we see it, we're more like, and, okay, where is it going? He's honest, he's not Zoro. She can't force him to move. Like, Zoro could force Luffy to move. She's not Zoro. And I don't think if he was Zoro, I don't think Luffy would give a single damn. So it's just... It's like, it's a waste of our time, in my personal opinion, to see Nami trying to get Luffy to move when we know he's not going to move. As I mentioned before, Bobbin. I'm so happy. I finally have a reason to talk about Bobbin. Now, I know a lot of other people have been talking about him, but I've been looking at it like we know nothing about him. 
I'm not going to sit here and speculate about Bobbin and discuss the Bobbin and videos and do whole videos about Bobbin when I don't even know when he's gonna show back up. Now that he's relevant again, and I kind of have an idea of what his job is and stuff like that, I can talk about him. So that I loved. I was very happy to see Bobbin. You can go check the live reaction. I was so happy to see Bobbin. That was great. I also think he's the leader of being raised to army, or the angry army. We'll have to see what they refer to them as in the official Viz Media Jonah Jump translation. But yeah, I mean, we could probably ask somebody from the One Piece podcast. They would probably know, because I know they know the translator. But I'm not sure what, but they probably won't tell us because they have to support the official release. But by the way, guys, if you don't know who the One Piece podcast is, the link is in the description. Go check out the One Piece podcast. They're great. They know more about the series than I do. They've been talking about it every week for years. And they're, they're, all, they're all great guys. I talked to a couple of them on Twitter. And they're all really nice guys. Great content on the One Piece podcast.com. Go check it out. But back to the chapter. So yeah, I mean, that was the majority of like two, two or three pages with just Luffy move, Bobbin and the army getting closer. A lot of this chapter is build up, and I'm sorry we're in the middle of the arc. We don't need build up for next chapter. I feel like that is a problem I have with one page as a whole. But a lot of times we'll, we'll be even at the climax of the arc and Oda takes an entire chapter to build up the following chapter when it's like you don't need that. Like Luffy could have gone year four against Cody in the first, in the beginning of Fifth Man Island, and there would be just as much hype for that that time as there was in, originally when he did it against Don Quixote del Flamingo. So yeah, I feel like we waste a little too much time building up the hype instead of just realizing the hype for a lot of this is already there. But next is something really big that I want to talk about. Judge, the Vince Smoke, Sanji and Pudding, and Big Mom all finally meet. Oh, thank you, God. We have only been trying to get to this meeting for like three, seven months now or something. My God, I think, I imagine you're getting kind of pissed off that they haven't met yet. Okay, so they're meeting. I know you want to talk about it, but only thing that I found significant is that Judge said this will definitely be a celebration no one will forget. Now he, now he could just be saying that like a normal person, but this is One Piece, so I need to overanalyze it because why the hell not? <laughs> I'm kidding, I'm just being sarcastic. Call, call sarcasm, people. No, but... Ah... Uh, okay, the best way I can describe this situation is I think Judge, like many people have speculated, and this is most, are planning to overthrow Big Mom. They're going to use this opportunity to get because they're not strong enough, obviously. Some, most, a good majority of them are weaker than Sanji, and Sanji won't, wouldn't even be able to be Cracker. And he's only just a commander. So they obviously can't overpower Big Mom, but they can, but they're assassins. They can get close, and they can stab her in the back. And that's probably their plan, in my opinion. I feel like that makes the most sense. Because I honestly, I feel like it'd be too boring if everything just went perfectly. Now while they're eating, we get a little bit of comedy, I guess, where it's not, with Nanji being a little weirded out by the talking food. I think it's Niji, who is like, how do I satisfy this damn talking food? I, I, like, it's alive, but it wants me to eat it so it can die. I, I'm eating it, but it's still not satisfied enough. How do I satisfy this food? Found that very funny, but they there was a little bit where the tea was singing. That was pretty interesting. She talked about how a great Big Mom talked about how great the Sanji can cook. All stuff that we pretty much already predicted would happen at this meeting. So let's talk about the big elephant in the room, the ending. So it's just a lot of talking between Sanji and Pudding. But the big thing I took out of it is that. 
not putting things legitimately interested in marrying Sanji and but only then keeping her from doing it is the fact that the only reason they're even engaged is because Big Mom is a bitch and that Sanji's friends are all going to probably die over this damn wedding. That's pretty much the only reason I think she's holding herself back. Because there is a point where she says, I'll make sure this marriage is in hell. And Sonny talks about how the first 13 years of his life were hell. And he does and he does have this great line where he says, Now it's time for my adventures to come to an end. There's a lot of great dialogue in this scene. I'm not gonna go over it all. But what I took out of it is that putting into jet thing, they go over plans. They talk about things that could work. They say the only way to get the key would of course be to defeat the entire Big Mom pirate. Get to Big Mom and defeat her. Which I immediately did because the that's not happening. So we can just move past that. They did the same thing. They're like, the only way to get the key they were, they were more so saying like the only way to get the key would be to beat her entire crew. Well we both know that's not gonna happen. She's a damn Yoko. And I came and beat one of her commanders because I'm because I'm and you know, I'm disappointing. I'm kidding, I'm kidding, but really it is a little disappointing in my opinion that Sanji came and that Sanji definitely can't even be a member of Big Mom crew, like one of the higher ups, but whatever. I mean, I would assume he could probably hold his own against Cracker, or maybe? Tell me in the comments, do you guys think Sanji could hold his own against Cracker? I find that very, very interesting. I want to know what you guys think about that. But if there's anything about this that I want to talk about, it's that at the end, the pudding said, let's get married. Now, I don't know where Oda's going with this. It's the, they're talking about like being each other's savior. It's really bizarre. It, it, like, it's giving off this vibe like maybe Sanji will get married. Which I would not be surprised if they're about to get married and Luffy crashes it. Or if he does get married. Here's an idea. Sanji's gonna get married. He gets married. But then Luffy saves him and Pudding afterward. And they give themselves the divorce and go their separate ways. Or maybe Pudding joins the crew. There are, even though what Oda said about the next straw had being female had no evidence. I have no idea where that came from. But as far as I'm aware, there's no evidence for that. If you have evidence as to why the next straw hat would be a female, tell me in the comments. But yeah, I don't see where that could have go. But this was a very, very good chapter of One Piece. No, it was entertaining. But I feel like the padding with Luffy and Nami kind of killed it for me. And I don't like Big Mom's storm ability. So if I had to rate this chapter, I would rate it, hmm... You know what? I would rate it a six, a six point nine out of ten. I know that's kind of low, but just the big mod's ability I hate, and the padding with Luffy and Nami was incredible. It was we we know that Luffy's not going to move. I'm sorry, you disagree. I think a six point nine is that's just what I honestly feel it is, and I'm not going to give it a higher. Great, because the ending was good. But if the whole chapter isn't just isn't that it is the same good quality, then I I am ranking it based on the entire chapter. I don't rank chapter based on the ending, unless it's like a build up chapter, and it's like it's meant to be that way storytelling wise. This, in my opinion, was not some of Oda's best work. That's just my opinion. Tell me your thoughts in the comment section down below. Did you enjoy the chapter? Did you like it? And do you like this new review format I'm doing where I do like skits and all that kind of stuff and I try all this new stuff and do you guys like that or do you guys just like it more when I'm just standing here in front of the green screen with like one single image and I review it? Or do you guys like it when I do more disgusting, talk about what could happen? It's longer but I feel like I can make them better, funnier, adding skits. My acting is in the best. I'm working on that. But yeah, tell me your thoughts on the review format and the chapter in the comment section down below. Uh, like the video if you enjoyed. I hope you did because this is a new format. So if you didn't, that means I can't do it. And above all else, guys, have a great day. 
Take one being naked, dining out. 